Number one, we have 36,000 times 10. Now, a lot of times people will say, if you're multiplying by 10, dividing by 10, 100, 1,000, anything, any power of 10, that you can just add or subtract zeros. Now, that is true if you're working with whole numbers, but it doesn't always work when we start getting decimal points involved. So, I don't like to teach my students that strategy. So, I'll show you what I teach them is if we have 36,000, we're multiplying by 10, multiplying by a whole number, it's going to be getting larger. So there's no decimal point to start here, but if there's no decimal point, we can always put one at the end. And since it's getting bigger, I'm going to move my decimal point one place, make it larger, add a zero in there, and my new decimal point is there, so I end up with 360. So 36,000 times 10 is 360,000. So for B, now we're dividing by 10. 10, a whole number, we're making it smaller. I'll put my decimal point at the end, move it over one place. So we're getting rid of that and we end up with 3600, zero, zero, which is 3,600. Part C, we have four and three tenths times 10. Now this is where it comes into Play that we can't just add a zero because if I just added a zero to the end of this we'd have the same number so 4 and 3 tenths times 10 is not 4 and 30 hundredths those are equivalent so we need to be moving the decimal point or think back to what we were doing before where we were shifting the place values so I'm gonna shift the place values one place to the left or thinking the opposite way I can just move the decimal point one place to the right so we end up with 43 this part D, now we're dividing 4 and 3 tenths divided by 10. So I'm going to be moving my decimal point to the left or shifting the digits to the right one place because it's 10. And we end up with 43 hundredths. We part E, 2 and 4 tenths, now we're times 100. So we're going to move the decimal point two places. So I'm going to add a zero there and we get 240. 24 divided by a thousand. No decimal point, I'm gonna put one at the end. We're dividing, which means I'm gonna be shifting my decimal point to the left. How many places? Well, three zeros, so I'm shifting it one, two, three places. I need to put a zero there as my placeholder and we get zero and 24 thousandths. We have, I kind of wrote over it, um, four and fifty-four thousandths. Let me make sure that's a four there. Yep, four and fifty-four thousandths. We are multiplying by a thousand, so we're gonna move it one, two, three places to the right. Add my zero in there. So we have four, five, four, zero, which is four thousand five hundred forty. And the last one, three thousand forty-five and four tenths divided by one hundred. 100 is 10 to the second power. We're moving it two places to the left, making it smaller. And we get 30 and 454 thousandths. All right, number two, find the products. Product, answer to a multiplication problem. So we have 14 and 560 times 10. Put my decimal point at the end. Move it over one place and we get 14 five, six, zero, zero, or 145,600 times 100. Same thing. I'm just going to use my sample up here. Move it one more space because we have times 100, 10 to the second power. We are going to get 1,456,000. And then by a million, moving it over one more spot so we will have moved it one two three spaces we're gonna have 14 million five hundred sixty thousand explain how you decided on the number of zeros for the products in a b and c well multiply by 10 add one zero divide by 10 we took away a zero multiplied by 10 we couldn't just add a zero so you can explain that in there, how that strategy doesn't always work. 
find the quotient, 16 and 5 tenths divided by 10. So we're going to move the decimal point one place to the left. We end up with 1 and 65 hundredths. Divided by 100. Move it two places this time. 1, 2. So we end up with 165 thousandths. Explain how you decided where the decimal in the quotients for A and B. So for A, we needed to shift the digits one place to the right or move the decimal place one place to the left because we were dividing by 10, 10 to the first power. In part B, we just needed to shift the decimal point two places to the right because we have 100, which is 10 to the second power, or we move it the decimal point two places to the left. Ted says that 3 tenths multiplied by 100 equals 300 thousandths. Well, let's see if he's correct. So if we have 3 tenths, we multiply it by 100, 10 to the second power, we're going to move our decimal point two places to the right. One, two, new decimal points there. That's gone. Well, 3 tenths times 100 equals 30. So... He is not correct. And they want us to use a place value chart. So you could draw your place value chart here. So if you have there's your decimal point, 3 tenths times 100, moving everything over, the 3 ends up there. You got to fill that in with a 0, so you get 30. Alaska has a land area of 1,700,000 square kilometers. Florida has a land area one-tenth the size of Alaska. So we can show one-tenth as one-tenth the fraction or one-tenth the decimal. What is the land area of Florida? Explain how you found your answer. Well, we could either multiply 1,700,000 times one-tenth, but I'm pretty sure we don't know how to do that yet. I don't think the lesson has gotten to multiplying by decimals. But we know that multiplying by one-tenth is the same thing as dividing by ten. So an easier solution would be to do 1,700,000 divided by ten. These two, same, these two problems will get you the exact same solution. So if we're dividing by ten, I'm going to put my decimal point at the end move it over one spot, get rid of that zero. And so our answer is going to be 170,000 kilometers squared. Don't forget your label. You can go ahead and explain how we found that answer.